welcome back. This is Eric Polanski. You're listening to the Robert Saviola Show on WBEN Radio 930 AM. Now, uh, to change gears a little bit to talk about uh, an, another scam, basically, uh, that's that's crept up on a national level here uh, pretty much uh, while we were out shoveling, and that is uh, Common Core. Common Core is, uh, as you probably know if you have children, it's a curriculum uh, in the public schools and other schools that um, is uh, controversial, to say the least. Uh, with me, I have Hal Shirtliff. Hal is the uh, regional director for the John Birch Society. Uh, Hal is going to be in Buffalo uh, at Hilbert College uh, next Thursday night. That's the 6th of February. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about Common Core and uh, show a video on Common Core that I think that anybody that has a child or is in the uh, the education industry ought to come and see. Uh, Hal, are you there? I'm right here, yes. Good morning, Hal. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, a pleasure. Hal, you are um, pretty far up the ladder uh, in the John Birch Society. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to get involved and, and what is happening with the society today? Well, uh, I know it's only a short segment, so i got to keep it brief. I, when I was a young man, I joined the Army, and I took an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That oath stays with me to the day I die. And um, I, have a, I happen to be a, a Christian, a professing Christian, and I believe that we have an obligation to expose the unfruitful works of darkness and promote uh, godly values. So this is what sort of motivated me to get involved, my understanding of what's happening in the world, and, and, and the Birch Society was one of uh, the best organizations to make you know make make that possible for me. And I joined in 1988 and got active as a as a volunteer a leader, a, co- uh, a chapter leader, and then uh, was offered a position on the staff in 1990. And I've served in a couple of different capacities since then, so over 23 years. Uh, mainly covering New England and New York and uh, at times other parts of the, the Midwest and some of the southern states, uh, working with volunteers. We're, for the most part, a volunteer-based organization. We do have a field staff, but it's uh, it's a small staff. And I'm, I'm not really so much high up the ladder. Uh, uh, I think that our most important uh, aspect of our society are the local members, uh, the local chapters. We look at the local chapter as sort of the backbone of it. Without that, we have very little impact. And uh, we are constitutionalists. We believe that the United States Constitution was one of, if not the best, uh, document written by man uh, to uh, promote uh, freedom and liberty. Contrary to what some people adhere, they say it's obsolete. It was written by 18th century minds. Actually, yes, 18th century minds that realized that man, man was innately depraved, and in order to have a civil government, that would um, maintain freedom. You had to have checks and balances, very strong checks and balances, and grant very limited powers to various um, government entities. And that uh, was George Washington who said at his farewell address that um, that government is not reason, is not eloquence. It is a force like fire, a dangerous servant and a fearful master. So the way to be free is to have limited government. Uh, you need you need some government. And you need some government with power to do what they need to do, but needed to be uh, very limited. Uh, the Birch Society takes its name from Captain John Mer- Morrison Birch, who was a, uh, a, a uh, missionary to China as a young man, in, uh, right before our involvement with World War II. And um, uh, he was uh, quite a very dynamic uh, inspiration to the Chinese people, who learned the language, and uh, was very successful as a missionary. And uh, World War II, our involvement got along, uh, came along, and he was a man who rescued uh, two of the crew of the Doolittle, famous uh, Doolittle bombing mission, including Doolittle himself, led them to safety, and he became an intelligence officer, and a uh, very heroic man, and a very humble man, too, and he was brutally murdered by the Chinese communists, which, a uh, fact that was hushed up by a State Department. And uh, the founder of the John Birch Society, Robert Welch, was very inspired by his story. Wrote a little book about him called uh, The Life of John Birch, and uh, with the parents' permission, uh, named it in his honor. 
And we've been around since 1958, uh, doing uh, our thing, promoting limited government and freedom. And uh, we see Common Core as, um, you know, as obviously a serious threat to our, our education and to our freedom. And the, this notion of federal control over education is not new. It started many years ago, about 1967 when uh, the secondary, I think it was called the Secondary Educational Act, was passed. That's what that gave the government lots and lots of power. And then um, there was a Department of Education that was more of a, an office that mainly uh, maintained facts and figures. It did not have cabinet status until Jimmy Carter became president, and so it enjoys cabinet status. And it's interesting, ever since uh, we've had this Department of Education that uses taxpayers' money to bribe state of state officials all over the country, our standards have been poor, lower. We may look at the Obama, we look call Common Core, Obama Core, but it, this notion of federal control of education didn't start with Obama, and unfortunately, it's not going to end with him either. So, uh, Common Core was something that was designed by uh, the, uh, the National Government Association. Actually, holds part of the copyright. And uh, what happened was in 2009 or so, 2010, the Department of Education, federal level, uh, said, look, you states, so, uh, you want to take this money, you better take common core, sight unseen. And uh, state governments love taking federal taxpayer money because that means they don't have to raise it locally and raise their taxes. So they took it. I think it was 46 states that initially signed on to it, sight unseen. And it was implemented like anything else. It's a gradual thing. Sam Blumenfeld's a dear friend. He's now 87 years of age. He is a pioneer in exposing this educational racket, the dumbing down, deliberately dumbing down of America. There's another uh, lady, by, a woman by the name of Charlotte Isabet, and I uh, do a search for her, and she wrote, actually wrote a book called The Deli Deliberately Dumbing Down of America. Sam Blumenfeld wrote a great book, uh, The NEA, Trojan Horse of American Education, that's the National Education Association, which has been around since the 1880s. And you look at people like John Dewey, who was uh, so-called humanist uh, progressive, where he um, advocated uh, uh, that you don't need a literate society. You know, you basically need a bunch of people. Right. Like the great new world, you know, left-handed people are running machines on this way, and right-handed people to do this, and... You know, uh, so uh, highly, highly literate people uh, get in the way of a totalitarian state. And these people were pretty bold. John Dewey, uh, who was from Vermont, and he had background, his father was a Calvinist minister, he said, we humanists, and a humanist is an atheist, it's a person who believes that deifies man, we will use the public schools as our pulpits. And today, they have almost total control of the public schools, the government schools around the country. Especially with their Common Core curriculum. Uh, Hal, real quick now, we're, we're under a minute left. Uh, what is the title of the film that you're going to bring with you? Yeah, it's called Common Core, The Dangers and Threats to American Liberty and Freedom. And it's put out by the Freedom Project Education, which is sort of an arm of the John Birch Society. Dr. Duke Pesta and Mrs. Mary Black, who are affiliated with the group. Uh, Dr. Dupest is a, uh, is a professor, and uh, Mrs. Black, whom I, I both know them, they're wonderful folks, They uh, she's been a teacher for 40 years, so had a lot of experience Excellent. in the academic world. Hal, thanks for the, uh, the time, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, God bless. You too, thank you.